Good morning, everybody. This is Robert from RJL518. Welcome you here to Redland Field for another game of the 1921 Payoff Pitch Cardinals replay that I'm uh, playing, coinciding with Bleacher Bums Gaming uh, Yankees replay as he's playing the American League and I'm playing the National League. Welcome, welcome you here too. The date is uh, April 19th, 1921. Today, the St. Louis Cardinals take on the Cincinnati Reds. In another, in another game, the Cardinals so far come into this game with a record of three wins and no losses. Cincinnati is on a record of three and two. The Reds actually played very well in the first game of this uh, series here in uh, Redland Field, but uh, Cardinals came back and won it. This is more of a also a replay for uh, um, for Rogers Hornsby as, of course, uh, Anthony at Bleacher Bums Gaming is doing Babe Ruth. And Rogers Hornsby so far is not off to a great start. He's three for 14 with a 214 average. He has one triple, two hits, a walk. He's hit by pitch. He has not yet hit a home run. So, so far, both his Ruth, his Ruth and my Hornsby have gotten off to some tough starts. So we'll, we'll see what happens here in this uh, game here at um, Redland Field between the Cardinals and the Reds. Uh, take a look at the, um, we're going to get, we're, this is this is a non-presentation presentation type game like I usually do for the 1994 restart. So we're just going to get right to it here, top of the first. Uh, starting pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds will be Rube Marquardt, 17 wins, 14 losses, 3.39 ERA. And he pitches today. So let's get things started underway here, top of the first for St. Louis. We'll have Cliff, Cliff Heathcote. He will lead off for the Cardinals here at Redland Field. And we start the game off with a defense. It's going to be a 76, and that's a range play to the first base to Jake Daubert. And that's a, and Daubert's range is a C. And he will make the play on a 70 on a 76. He gets it. He'll take the play himself. And there's one quick out right there. On a grounder to first. And that will bring up Jack Fournier. I'm two games behind uh, Bleacher Bums Gaming, so we're trying to get these two games in today. And, of course, we have uh, we do have the 19, 1994 uh, restart tonight uh, between the, Oriole, the White Sox and the Orioles, a big game tonight. Uh, pitch from Marquardt's a patient. That's going to be an 0-1, and that is going to be a walk for Jack Fournier as he gets the base on balls. Runner on base there. And the next batter for the Cardinals is Milt Stock. And that is a 10. That is an in play. That's a 16. And that is going to be a base hit for Milt Stock. It will be a single. It's a long single to the gap to center field. Runner on first advances one base. So Fournier goes to second. Stock holds it first. And a single. Muton Mike, Sports Time Machine. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for joining me today. For joining me today here at Redland Field for the game between Cardinals and the Reds. So runners at first and second with one out. The batter is Hornsby, and he's off to a not a great start. Three for 14 so far for the replay. Yeah, defense at a five. Wow, that's not a good spot for how bad defenses are. Yeah, that's true. That truly is here. So runners at first and second, one out. Let's see if Hornsby can help the stats a little bit here. This is a nine. This is an in play. It's a 59, and that won't do it. That's going to be a grounder to third. Hornsby's double play rating is a six, so is Marquardt's, and they're going to get the lead runner. So since the grounder went to third, Fournier is out at third. He will take the force himself. So runners will still be at first and second, but now with two outs. And that's kind of a rule I think you got to make. I think you go ahead, if the ball is hit the third base, he'll take the force out at third since it is a, four, since it is a fielder's choice. So that is a grounder to third. So Fournier is removed, but still runners at first and second now for Austin McHenry. So Rogers Hornsby starts out 0 for 1. McHenry so far is off just playing pretty good for the Cardinals early on. Here's the pitch. It's a 10. That's an in play. It's a 36. And Austin McHenry is going to get a base hit. That is a single with two outs. Milt Stock with a run rating of 7 will score. Hornsby will go to third. McHenry goes to first, and just like that, the Cardinals jump out one nothing. <laughs> Base hit from McHenry. He's so far been the he has so far been the unknown, the unsung hero for the Cardinals early in this re, in this uh, replay. 
So runners at first and third, two outs. Now the batter for St. Louis is Doc Lavin. And this is a seven. It's a tough. It's a 48. And that one, that will do it. That's going to be a ground ball to first. Coming over there will be Jake Galbert. He will make the play. And the side is retired. But the Cardinals do get a run on two hits and a walk. And that will do it for St. Louis here on the top of the first. So we go to the bottom of the first inning. Now, here's the funny thing. The starting pitcher for St. Louis in this game was going to be Bill Pertika. Jakey May actually was the starter for the last game. but And then he was listed as the starter for this game. And I wondered, how could he start two games in a row? And I went ahead and checked. I said, okay, Jakey May actually pitched an inning of a, and a third, about an inning of a third in the game, in, in his first game, and then was taken out. So I'm figuring it may have been an injury or something. Maybe he was ejected. I'm not sure. But he was taken out. And Bill Pertika actually start, became the, the emergency starter for uh, the Cardinals in, the game, in yesterday's game. Now, since Jakey May actually did pitch the full game in my replay yesterday, I can't really start him for this one. So I'm going to use Bill Pertika to start for the Cardinals in this game, which actually makes perfect sense. Um, everything else should be fine, according to Out of the Park Baseball, when I check, because that's what I'm using to get the 25-man rosters for each game. Bill Pertico, 14 wins, 10 losses, 3.37 ERA. So bottom of the first, St. Louis now in the field, and the batter will be Dodie Paskert. And just give me one second here, because I just knocked over my cards. So one problem with these stands sometimes, the cards get caught pretty pretty easily, but they do protect them pretty well. Okay. So here's Dodie Paskert. He will lead off for the Reds in this game. Even though the even though the card says Crosley Field. It actually wasn't really called that until 1934. It was known as Redland Field in 1921. I am going to help um, Joe with some of his uh, Joe will help some of his uh, built ballpark names. Here's Dodie Pasker. It's a 7. It's a patient. And that's going to be an 82. And that is going to be a ground out short for one down. Here's Jake Dalbert. And that is an 11. That's a ballpark. 76, that will be in play. It's an 05. And against the right-hander, that is going to be a triple for Jake Dalbert. He goes to third. Another one of those triples down in 19, back in 1921. That will bring up Sam Bone. St. Louis will call and field in. And that is a six. That's a tough. That is an 85. And that is a ground out. That is a ground to shortstop. Let's see what happens here. The number is a six. Runner on third. Out at home. Batter safe. Other runners advance a base. So the infield in works. Two outs. As Jake Dalbert is thrown out. A bone is safe at first on a, on a, field, on a fielder's choice pretty much. Two outs now. The batter will be Pat Duncan. It's going to be a, another rule to see if the even the batter even goes to even the batter even goes home. But let's see. Two outs, an eleven. That's a ballpark. That's a twenty-five. That's going to be in play as well. That's going to be twenty-seven, and Pat Duncan will have a base hit. That is a single. Bone has a run rating of eight. He will go to third automatically. A base hit for Duncan. Runners at first and third, two outs. Here's Rube, and the next batter will be Rube Bresler. This is a five. That's a defense, 89, but that'll, that should be okay. That's an error check to third base. Stocks defensive rating. That's an error check. He is a 1, a 1 to 58, but the roll is an 89. It's going to be a great play. 
It's going to be a great play by Stock. He will throw to second and get the out, and the inning is over. So a very nice uh, getting out of a jam for the Cardinals. And it is one nothing still St. Louis. I'm going to try to get two games in today to try to catch up to him. I was hoping he wouldn't do another game yesterday, but he did. So, and I'm letting him, I'm going at his pace. I will not go ahead of him uh, for Anthony because he said, told me he doesn't know how long it will take. I said, no problem. I'm still running my uh, uh, 1994 season restart. Bears Den, welcome to Redland Field for tonight, for today's game between the Cardinals and the Reds. Just starting at the top of second, when nothing cards. And leading off for St. Louis here will be Vern Clemens. Non-presentation style game. It's a tough. It's that is a 44. And that is going to be a ground ball right back to Marquardt. He will make the play. Grounder pitcher, one out. Here's Bex to Porcer. And that is a defense, uh, 38. So here comes another defensive play, and that could be an error to Marquardt. Let's find out. His It's an error check on the pitcher. Marquardt's rating is a three. And that is a one to – and, yeah, he's going to make a play just barely. One to 37 for an error check at Redland Field. It's a 38. Rube Marquardt makes the play and throws him out at first. What a good – what a great play there by Marquardt as he makes the first two outs. And that will bring up Bill Pertika, the pitcher for St. Louis. Bears then 007 got a question. Do you, is 007, you got that in your name, is that because you are a James Bond fan? I'm, 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 I know it's probably obvious, but are you a James Bond fan? Because I'm a huge one as well. Two outs, here's the pair of Mr. Pertika. That is an eight, that's a patient, that's a 21, and that is going to be a double for Bill Pertika, the pitcher. So he gets a two-out double. He goes to second base and will hold there. So a two-out double there for Pratika as the pitcher gets into the act. Top of the batting order for St. Louis and Heathcote. Heathcote grounded out his last time up. Here's the pitch. It's a six. It's an in play, 59. And that is going to be a fly out to left, and that will retire the side. So no runs but a, dub, but a hit. And nothing there for St. Louis. Although the Bill Pratika gets into the act as the pitchers can definitely hit. No, I like Bond. It's from my old AOL days. I just couldn't use the seven. Oh, okay. I just wondered about that. That's cool. My favorite Bond movie is The Spy Who Loved Me. That's my favorite Bond, and I love them all. I have them all. It's just they're always fun to watch. So we go to the bottom of the second inning. Still one nothing Cardinals. Bill Pratika will now be pitching to Lou Fonseca. For the Reds in the bottom of the second. Here's the pitch. It's a four. That's a tough. It's a 53. And that is going to be a line as a as a shot line drive right back to second. It's going to be a line out as Torporcer goes ahead, puts his glove out, and spears it. And that was definitely on its way to the outfield. That's going to be a line out to second, one out. Batter now for Cincinnati will be Sam Crane. This is an 11. That's another ballpark. That's a 50, but that's going to be in play. It's an 82, and that is going to be a ground out to short. Second out. And now here's Bubbles Hargrave. Bubbles. I just love it. Bubbles. Two men out. There's the pitch from Tika. This is a five. That's another defense. A twenty-nine. A lot of defensive roles today. That's a. Let's see here. That's a. That's going to be an error check on the third baseman. So that's stock. His error rating is a one. 
It's a 29, and that is definitely going to be an error on stock. See what kind of error it is. And that is just a simple one base error. So Bubbles Hart, so pretty much stock, threw the ball in the dirt. It's considered a bad throw. Hargrave will be safe at first with two outs. So that is the first error on the Cardinals. As I'm going to give him a, as I will give the Cardinals an error here. So that is an E5, Hargrave on it at first base. And it will bring up the pitcher, Rube Marquardt. Two outs here. Hargrave on it first. And that is another defense check, a 28. Wow. And this one is going to be a range check on the right fielder, which is McHenry. His range is a B, a 1 to 47, a 28. He will not get there. So now we'll see what kind of a hit this one. And that's going to be a two base single. So Hargrave goes to third, Marquard to first. So the defense is right now is hurting the Cardinals in this one. As Hargrave will hold the third base, that is just a base hit for Marquard. And runners at first and third with two outs. Oh, my. Top of the batting order. I know, defense on a five. I know. Here's Doty Pascart. I'm pretty sure Joe Bryan takes into effect not just the pitcher himself, but also at the park he played at, too. Some 19 Sportsman's Park for the Cardinals. If it was not, if it was named that, I got to re-double check and see if it was called that at that time. Although well, that's the name he's got on the card. But uh, St. Louis Sportsman's Park uh, was pretty deep. There was a lot. There was a lot of room in that park. A lot, matter of fact, back in those days, parks were were actually very deep in most parks. They were all they were considered today. They would all be considered pitchers' parks. Here's the pitch to Pascard. That's an eleven. That's another ballpark, but that's going to be in play. A 56, and they're going to get out of the inning. It's going to be a fly ball to right, and the inning will be over as Bill Pratica gets out of it. So no runs, one hit, and there is an error on the Cardinals, but it's still one nothing St. Louis as they get out of the inning. Yeah, defense on a five. I know right. Be a lot of defensive checks today. Even on Pratika's card and Marquardt's card, both have defense on a five. And yet Pratika has ballpark on 11 and 12. Marquardt has ballpark on four. And Pratika, uh, he gave up nine home runs that year. And not bad, really. It's, I mean, it's, it's less than half a home run per nine innings. That's actually pretty good. Nine home runs. On two on two hundred and eight innings pitch, that's actually excellent. That's excellent, really. A lot of pitchers wish today's pitchers wish they could give up less than a home run like that. Marquardt was even better, zero point three homers per nine innings. We go to the top of the third. The Cardinals still lead the Reds one nothing. And here's Jack Fournier to lead off. Top of the third inning. And we got a seven. That's going to be a tough, a 33, and that's going to be a strikeout. One man down. That will bring up Milt Stock. Stock singled his last time up and scored. And this is a seven. This is also a tough, a 98. And that's going to be a fly out to left. Two quick outs. And now the batter is Hornsby, which is really what this replay is about. And he's 0 for 1. This is an 8. That's a patient. That's a 44. Hornsby draws a walk. Two out walk for Hornsby. Base on balls. And now the batter is McHenry, and he's the guy really been doing it so far for the Cardinals. He's singled his last time up. He is one for one. And that is a seven. That's a tough, a 49. 
And that's he's going to miss it this time, though. That's just a ground ball right back to the pitcher. Marquardt's got it, throws the first, and that will retire the side. No runs, a walk, no hits, nothing going on there for St. Louis in this one. Reds were a pretty decent team. They were actually a pretty decent team in, um, in 1921. We go to the bottom of the third. Bill Pratica will be pitching to Jake Galbert. And that is going to be a tough, a 14, and that is definitely a strikeout. And just got the strikeout, a 14 on Dalbert against righties. It's a 1-14, to 14 actually, and a roll is a 14. Just got him out. I'm going to say that's a called strike three, and Dalbert can't believe it. One minute away, here's Bone. And that is a 6. That's a tough 0-5, oh, and that's a definite strikeout. Two down. And now here's Pat Duncan. That's a three. That's an in play, 87. And that's just going to be a weak ground ball to short. Coming up with it is Doc Lavin. He will throw to first. And it's a one, two, three inning for the Reds. Nothing across. We go to the top of the fourth inning in this um, in this matchup between St. Louis and Cincinnati here at Redland Field. I'll do a quick shuffle. Looking forward to getting my other fact deck. So we're going to tear on the cards. Top of the fourth inning here at Redland Field. Here comes Marquardt. Leading off for the Cardinals will be Doc Lavin. And this is an 11. That's a tough. That's a 14. And that is a definite strikeout as Marquardt does the job there for the first out. Cardinals have been getting the lowest amount of runs the Cardinals have scored so far in this replay in the first three games, eight, which was yesterday. They've been scoring runs. So here's Vern Clemens. Pitch from Marquard. That is a seven. That is a tough, a 21. And that is a strikeout on Clemens. So Marquard trying to answer Pratika. Battle now is to Porcer. And that is an eight. That's a patient. That's a 56. And that's going to be a single for Specs to Porcer. He gets a two-out base hit. He will hold it first. The steal rating is a three. He will not run. And then we'll let Bill Pratika bat. And why not? He hit a double as he hit, he got a he hit a double his last time up. Two outs. Runner on first. That is an eight. That's a patient. A 71. And that one's going to be a weak fly ball to center. Paskert will get under that, and that will end the inning. No runs and a hit for the Cardinals. Bottom of inning number four. Leading off for the Reds will be Rube Bresler. And that is a six. That's a tough. That is a 60. And that is a ground out to third. One man down. Here's Fonseca. He lined out to second his last time out. Here's a nine. That's going to be an in play, a 57. And that is going to be a ground out to third as well. And now the batter is Sam Crane for the Reds. 
That is an eight. That's an in play, a 90. And that is just going to be a ground out to short. So three straight ground outs given by Pratika. And the Reds are sent down in order. Still one nothing St. Louis. In this National League matchup here at Redland Field. I was watching a little Appa Bryan uh, tonight, this morning. As I usually do. I usually have a cup of coffee and listen and watch Appa Bryan's games. He's got the Twins and the uh, 65 Twins and the 05 White Sox. He was talking about Tony Oliva and how great he will look and how great a player he was until the injuries curtailed him. Um, I tell you, if anybody doesn't get a chance, I always think, and he always puts his videos always in the early part of the morning. Appa Bryan, uh, always fun to watch. He does it very nice. It's a very quick paced game, Appa. And uh, his, his, um, he's just a wonderful guy, I think. And his game and his games are always amazing. And sometimes he gets, a, he gets a couple of crazy ones. He gets a couple of crazy ones. So be on the lookout. If anyone has a chance, I would uh, give him a look in the morning. He's always fun to watch. Top of the fifth inning, Cardinals one, Reds nothing. Here's Rube Marquardt to pitch for Cincinnati. And top of the batting order for St. Louis. For Heathcote, he is 0 for 2. And that is a 7. That's a tough. That's a 35. And that's going to be a double for Cliff Heathcote, a leadoff two-bagger, as he sends that one off the center field wall. That's a good way to start. And now Jack Fournier. He's 0 for 1, walked and struck out. That is a 9. That's an in play, a 14. And that is going to be a base hit for Jack Fournier. Let's see. It's a single. It's a sharp liner that drops in front of left field. Runner on runner on second scores. So Fournier gets an RBI base hit. Heathcote comes in, and the Cardinals are now up two nothing. This Cardinal team can definitely get runs, and they were very good that year. They just lost out a little bit uh, to the New York Giants and Brooklyn. RBI hit for Fournier. He goes to first. Still nobody out. And the batter will be Milt Stock. Yeah, 219 team errors, 193 team errors. That, Like you said, fielding? Fielding? You don't need no stinking fielding. Just go out there and hit the ball. Who cares if the guy, who cares if the guy can't make a routine ground ball to second? A, a, routine, a routine ground ball, a, a, a routine double play. Who cares if he can't turn it? You know, the, we'll, get, we'll get it back. <laughs> Jack Fournier on first. His steal rating is a five. He will not run. So here's Milt Stock. And that is a five. That's a defense, 25. And just as we're talking about it. And error check to third base. That's the bone. His rating is a three, a one to 37. And he will commit an error. And that is a one base error. So Sam Bone bobbles the ball there. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. So I give an error to Cincinnati on that one here for the inning. So we move Fournier to second, and that is an E. And that is an E5. He couldn't make the play. And as you talk about team errors, so there you go, Utah Mike. You talk about team errors, and we get an error. Thanks a lot. I'm sure the Reds are happy about that now. It's your fault. Here's Rogers Hornsby. Still nobody out. Runners at first and second. St. Louis now looking to blow this up if they can. Here's the pitch. It's a six. It's an in play. It's a 39. And that is a base hit for Rogers Hornsby. He comes through in the clutch with a hit. See what kind of hit it is. It's a hard grounder into left field. Runner on first advances one base. Runner on second advances one base with choice. Fournier is an eight. And he goes to third. Stock goes to second. Hornsby is on first. So I'll first, I'll first give the base hit to him there. And now let's see. His rating is an eight. And that ball, and that ball was actually hit to left field. So that is Duncan with an arm rating of five. Fournier with an eight has a good chance to score. But I think with nobody out, they'll hold him. So they're not going to run with him. Bases are loaded and nobody out. Why try? Why try something? So bases are juiced for Austin McHenry. 
And why not? He's been, he's been swinging the hot bat in the start of the season. Bases loaded. Top of the fifth, 2 nothing Cardinals. With a run already in. And here's the pitch to McHenry. And that is an in play. That's going to be a 68. And by the way, I'll think the infield would, I will still say the infield was in. So the infield in 68. And that won't matter. That's going to be a fly ball to right. So McHenry flies out one down. Let's see what kind of fly ball it is. And that is a deep fly ball that will score Fournier without a throw. Runners hold. So Fournier comes in on the sacrifice fly. Deep fly has no problem coming in to score. And it is now 3-0 St. Louis with one out. So McHenry gets another gets another RBI. 291 was the league average. Hell, who needs pitching? I agree there too. Yeah, pitching, pitching and fielding. Nah, don't need it. I think it's a. I, I, you know, it, I, it's going to be that animal's going to be extinct in the future. So one out and a big hit for Hornsby. So that helps his average a bit. Here's Doc Lavin. Lavin is 0 for two. Cardinals still got a chance to blow this game open. Here's the pitch. It's a seven. That's a tough. It's a 21. And Doc Lavin will swing and a miss at strike three. Big strikeout for Marquardt trying to keep the game from getting out of hand. The batter now is Vern Clemens. Two outs here. Still top of the fifth. That is a nine. That's an in play 16. And that is going to be a single for Vern Clemens. Milt Stock automatically goes to automatically will score. Hornsby will go to third. Clemens is on first. On a run rating of seven with two outs, he will come in, and it is now four to three, four, 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 four to nothing, Cardinals. Spurton Clemens gets himself an RBI in a single. One's beyond at third. Clemens is on at first. The batter is Specs to Porcer. <clears throat> With two outs. And here's the pitch. And that is a three. That's an in play, but an 84 will end this inning. It's going to be a ground out to second. And that will do it. But the Cardinals do get some runs. They get three runs on four hits and an error. Big inning for the Cardinals as they take a 4 nothing lead here at the end of four and a half. Quick timeout, real quick. Okay, we're back here. We come back to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It is a 4 nothing lead 
for the Cardinals over the Reds. Bill Pratica will come out now and pitch for St. Louis as the Reds are now a little bit behind the eight ball. Here's Bubbles Hargrave. He reached on an error in E5. Each team has committed one error. Here's the pitch. That's an in play. That's a 45. And that is going to be a ground ball right back to the pitcher. And that is one out. Ground out to Pratika. Here's Rube Marquard. He actually got on base with a single his last time up. That's a four. That's a tough. He won't do it there. That is a strikeout, an easy strikeout on Marquard. Two down. Top of the batting order for Cincinnati and Doe to Paskert. And that is a nine. That's an in play, 94, and that is a fly out to left. And if you're a Cardinals fan, you did exactly the Cardinals did exactly what you wanted to do. You scored runs in your half of the inning and did not give any back in the next half. That always kills momentum. I always say I don't care if you score 10 runs in your half of the inning. If you let the other team get at least one or two runs back or anything like that, your momentum you gained in that inning is lost. Doesn't matter. Momentum is everything in baseball. And if everyone here has been watching baseball as long as I have, you know every, as I, you know as well as I do, momentum is everything. If a team suddenly has momentum and at the plate, they think they can hit anything out of the park. So we go to the top of the sixth inning. It's still Cardinals four, Reds nothing. And Bill Pratica actually leads off for Cincinnati, or sometimes for St. Louis, here in the top of the sixth. Let's see what we got. That is a 10. That's an in play. That's going to be a base hit for Bill Pertika. He gets another hit. That is his sec That is his second hit of the game. And he will go to first. So Bill Pertika showing he can swing the bat. And he only batted 103 against lefties. But he's got a couple of hits today. Including a double. So Pertika on at first. Top of the batting order. For St. Louis and Heathcote. And that is a 10. That's an in play. A 41. And that one's going to be a ground ball right back to Marquardt. His double play rating is a 6. Heathcote's a 6. It's a 10. It's going to be a fielder's choice. So Heathcote and Pratika will trade places. As Pratika is erased, and there is one out on the fielder's choice. And the batter is Jack Fournier, who singled his last time up and scored. There's the pitch from Marquardt. That's an 11. That's a tough, a 79. And that's going to be a fly out to center field, second out. The batter now will be Stock. Stock has scored twice. He is one for two, reached on an error, and singled. He's coached to lit first. He's not running. Here's the pitch. That is a four. That's a ballpark, 18, and Mel Stock's a righty. That is in his wheelhouse, and it's a 42. He will get a base hit. That is a single. Heathcote will go to third with two outs. Stock is on at first. And St. Louis keeps the inning alive on a single there by Stock. And the batter now is Rogers Hornsby. So he has a chance to get some more runs to add it to his credit. Two outs, top of the sixth, four nothing Cardinals. And here's the pitch for Marquardt. That is a five. That's a defense, 33. And that is an error to the shortstop check. That's Crane. This error rating is a two. And that is going to be an error on Crane. That is going to be an E6. Second error on the Reds. Let's see what kind of error that is. 
And that is a single, actually, plus one. Which means Hornsby actually gets a base hit. So Hornsby gets a base hit. Which will score Heathcote. And a plus one, which means Stock will go to third. Hornsby goes to second. And Stock with a run rating of seven actually scores because of the two run of the two outs. So two runs actually come in for the Cardinals. So it's a single and an error is what it really is. It allows Hornsby to go to second base and two runs will come in if I'm reading that right. And it is now six to nothing Cardinals. Another error on the Reds. Oh my. And I want to check that real just to be sure I did that right. Single plus one. Great stop by fielder who throw great stop by fielder who throws ball away. Blooper in both cases, batter awarded a single and advanced to second base on error. Runners advances two bases. That's exactly what that is. Okay. So I did do that right. So with two outs, the Cardinals now lead six nothing on two huge errors by the Reds. And the batter is Austin McHenry, and that's another hit, by the way, for Hornsby, because it's considered a single plus one. McHenry is one for three. This is an in play. That's a 40, and that's going to be a base hit from McHenry. He gets another hit, which will score Hornsby from second automatically on a two, or two outs. McHenry continues to do well. I have to check some of these stats, but I'm really just trying to keep track of Hornsby. But right now, the Cardinals are up seven to nothing. And that's going to be it for Marquardt, even though, even though it's really not his fault. I really shouldn't charge the, the runs on the error to him. But that's going to be it for Marquardt with two outs here on the top of the six. So the Reds are going to have to make a pitching change as they will be done for the game. The next batter for St. Louis is Doc Lavin. He is a righty. And we'll see who they bring in. Coming on to pitch for Cincinnati will be Epa, will be Epa Rixey. I'll use him as a, even though he's really a starter, but I can bring him in in relief. He was on the 25-man roster for this game. Epa Rixey. It was 19 wins, 18 losses, a 2.78 ERA. Actually, you know what? No, never mind. Never mind. I'm going to make a change on that. Too much of a starter, in my opinion. Let's do it right. Let's bring in a guy that really has not been much of a starter in this case. And that will be... That will be... Well, there's not much of a choice. Their bull, Cincinnati's bullpen was meh. Uh, let's bring in, well, we'll bring in Fritz Combe. Makes better sense. Fritz Combe will come in instead. Three wins, four losses, 3.22 ERA. His fatigue rating is long, so it's 10 plus 2. So it's a 12 fatigue rating for him. So let's see here. So I'll put his fatigue rating with that. And still two outs. So Fritz Combe will now come out and pitch for the Reds. He'll go up against Doc Lavin with two outs here. And that is an 11. That's an in play, a 94. That will get him out of the inning. That's a fly out to left. And the side is retired. But the Cardinals pick up three, run pick up three runs on... Pick up three runs on three hits and an error. And the Cardinals now lead seven to nothing on the Reds. We 
We go to the bottom of the sixth inning, Bill Pratica. His fatigue rating, he's not caught it yet, so he's in good shape. We'll see if the Reds can get any of those runs back, though. Here's Jake Dalbert. He leads off for Cincinnati. And that is a six. That is a tough. That's a 20. And that is a base hit for Jake Dalbert. He gets a single. That's a single for Dalbert. So a leadoff hit for the Reds. And that will bring up Sam Bone. Dalbert not stealing. You're down by seven runs. You need base runners. Here's the pitch. That's a tough. That's an 11. And that is a strikeout. That is strikeout number four for Pratika. He usually averages about three per nine. The batter now is Pat Duncan. Dalbert still at first, not running. That is an 11. That's a ballpark, 55, but that's going to be in play. It's an 07, and that is going to be a double for Pat Duncan. And we'll see what kind of double it is here. And that is going to be a line drive into the alley in center field. All runners will score, so the Reds get on the board with a run on a big double by Pat Duncan. And it's now 7-1. to one. And the next batter will be Rube Bresler. This is the first game. I'm going to try to get another Cardinals-Reds game, and after that, that means I've caught up to uh, BBG. One out. Bresler at plate. Pratika not, not, uh, he's still pretty strong. Duncan on at second. There's the pitch to Bresler. That is going to be a ballpark, 42. That's also going to be an in play. That's a 10, and that's going to be a single for Bresler. As a 10 is rolls, that's going to be a single now let's see what kind of single that is. That is a ball blooped into right field. Runner on second does score. And it is now 7-2. to two As the Reds are getting some runs back. Reds did not really stink. They just, they, they just were not that great. They were a mech kind of team. Around 500. I think they finished, uh, let's see, the Reds. 1921 finished 70 wins, 83 losses. They were actually 13 games under 500. But that team could play ball. They didn't really, they were not terrible. So Bresler on at first now, still one out, but now the score is seven to two. They're going to talk to head. Um, Clemens is going to talk to Patika for a moment. They're going to get some action going on in the St. Louis bullpen just to make sure. And still one out. All right. They talk to him. The batter now will be Fonseca. This is a nine. That's an in play, a 72. And that's going to be a grounder to second. Let's see what it is. Fonseca's double play range is a seven. Partika's a six. It is a nine. They will get the force out. As Fonseca is safe at first. They couldn't turn two on that one. And the batter now will be Sam Crane. Here's the pitch, and that is a six. That's a tough, a 10, and that is a strikeout as Bill Pratika gives up a couple of runs, but he gets out the inning. And that does it there. So two runs on three hits for the Reds. Seven to two. I guess nothing but offense in 1921, although we had a pretty good offensive game last night between the Mets and the Astros in uh, my 1994 season restart. If anyone is checking this game out here, take a look at that one. That game was actually a lot of fun to play. All of these are, really, no matter what year we're playing or season or team. We go to the top of the seventh. We'll still have my 10-minute ticker for the National League. 7-2 Cardinals, Fritz Combe. Fritz Combe is still the pitcher. 
Leading off for St. Louis will be Vern Clemens. And that is a seven. That's an in play, a 23, and that's going to be a leadoff base hit for Clemens. And that will bring up to Porcer. Clemens, a steal rating of F. He will not be going anywhere. So Porcer is one, four, three. And that is a six. That's a patient. That's a 73. And to Porcer is going to get himself a base hit off a of comb. So that is a single. See what kind of single it is. That's an opposite field liner in the left field. Runner on first advances two bases, so Clemens goes to third. And to Porcer holds the first. And the batter now is Bill Pertica. And they're going to say he could still he could still go. And still nobody out here in the top of the seventh. The Reds are going to play the infield in. They do not want any more runners scoring. And that is a six. That's a patient. That's a 58. And that one is going to be a fly ball to right field. So that is one out. Let's see what kind of fly out it is. Actually, Vern Clemens' run rating is a five. I don't think it matters, but see what kind of fly. It is a deep fly ball. And I'll check the chart real quick. Outfielder makes running catch deep in the outfield. Runner on third base with a run rating of seven or more scores. Runner on third base with a run rating of six or less may attempt to score using coach's choice chart. His run rating is a five. He's not going anywhere. One out. Was not. Vern Clements has absolutely no speed. So one man out. One man out. The batter is Heathcote. Runners at first and third. They're now they're going to play. Now they're going to continue staying infield in. Still don't want any runs to score. Heathcote is one for four, but he scored twice. This is a nine. That's an in play, a 93, and that's another fly ball to right field. That's the second out. And again, Verdon Clemens will not attempt to try it. No speed on it third. That one does hurt. Could have scored a couple of runs. So now two outs, and the batter is Jack Fournier. Still runners at first and third, two outs. Here's the pitch. And that is a nine. That's an in play, a 47, and they're going to get out the inning. That's a ground ball right back to Combe. He gets it, throws to first, and the Reds get out of the jam. Only because of no speed at first base, at, th at third base, Prevents St. Louis from scoring on two pretty decent sacrifice flies. Even though you got a 7-2 lead, you don't want to give any momentum to the other team. We are at the seventh inning stretch. And before we I'm gonna go here real quick and do a quick shuffle, then we're going to do our 10-minute ticker for the National League in 1921. I'm glad everybody who visits here enjoys the game. Thanks to all my subscribers and the ones that are helping me get subscribers. Thank you very much. And hope all is well. Staying safe and healthy in a very tough time right now. We got real baseball starting tomorrow, which I think is awesome. My Mets take on the start their season off against the Braves. Yankees play the Nationals. Should That should be fun to watch. So here's our 1921 quick results charts. We're doing 4 21 Everybody was active in this game. So here we go. The Giants were at the Boston Braves. And the Braves were a B. So we go with this one right here. And that is an 8. And that's going to be a win for the Boston Braves. They win, they win that game. 
They win that game seven to four. So a win for the Boston Braves over the Giants, who actually won that league last year. Pittsburgh takes on the Chicago Cubs. It's an A versus a D. So this is for Pittsburgh right here. And that is an 11, and that is a win for the Pirates. They win that game 8-2. to two. And finally, Brooklyn and the Phillies, the Brooklyn Robins, that is a B versus an F. And that is a seven, and that is a win for Brooklyn. They win that game seven to two. And we have our game going on, too. The Cardinals were ranked an A in that year, and the Reds were a C. So, so far right now, the better teams are winning. But anything can happen. And that is our 10-minute ticker for this one. So now, so now we go to the bottom half of inning number seven, and it's seven to two Cardinals. Bill Pratika will remain on the mound. Leading off for Cincinnati is Bubbles Hargrave. And this is a nine for Pratika. That's going to be an in play, a 95, and that's a fly out to left. Fritz Combe is the batter, but we're going to see a pinch hitter for him. So that will be it for Combe. And Cincinnati will go to the bench. So let's see what we get here. And let's see for, for Fritz Combe. So he comes out. The, car, the Reds will bring up a pinch hitter. And against the righty, they're going to have... They're going to have Ed Roush come into bat. Ed Roush, a very good hitter. Start a number of games, but he's not starting any of these games early on between the Cardinals and the Reds. So here's Ed Roush to pinch hit for Fritz Cole, which means he is done. And we have to bring another pitcher for him. Here's the pitch to Roush for Patika. That is a seven. That's going to be a patient, a 90. And he will get out of that one. That's a ground ball to second base. And that is the second out. So Ed Roush does nothing there for the Reds. And top of the batting order now for Cincinnati and Dodie Pasker. And that is a 10. That's a patient. That's a 56. And that is going to be a fly out to right. And it's going to be a 1-2-3 inning for Pratika. As he keeps the Reds at bay. So still 7-2 Cardinals. And was going to go to the top of the eighth now for St. Louis. We'll see a new Reds pitcher. And we'll see who will come in pitch here for the, for the Reds. And it's going to be Pete Donahue. Donahue will pitch. Seven wins, six losses, 3.35 in RA. But he did have seven relief appearances, and he's also a starter. So top of the eighth inning for St. Louis and Cincinnati, 7-2 to Cardinals. Pete Donahue comes in to pitch. And Milt Stock leads off for the Cardinals. Stock having a good game. He is two for three, two for three, and also reached on an error. He scored three times. Stock gets on base. Top of the eighth. Here's the pitch. Donahue, and his he has a long fatigue rating, so he could actually go the rest of the game. So there's no need to do a fatigue. He can go the rest of the game if possible. So here's Stock. It's a seven. That's a tough. That's a 37. And that is going to be a pop out to short. One out. Here's Rogers Hornsby.
Hornsby is two for four. And that is a 10. That's an in play. A 99 It's not going to cut that. That's a fly out the left. Actually, it's a fly out the right. And now Austin McHenry keeps on getting runs. Runs batted in. He's got two singles today. Two outs to pitch to McHenry. That is an eight. That's a patient, a 56. And that's going to be another base hit for Austin McHenry. He's been the guy doing it for the Cardinals so far early in this year. That's his third single of the game. And that will be Doc Lavin. He will not steal. And that is a six. That is an in-play 90. And that is going to be a ground out to short. And that will end the inning. So no runs on a hit. You go to the bottom half of inning number eight. And Bill Partika, his fatigue rating is in this inning. But we'll see what happens if he allows a run. He's been doing very well for the Cardinals today. But bottom of the eighth inning, he will face pretty much the heart of the order. Here's Jake Daubert batting for Cincinnati. And that is a five. That's another. Uh, that is a leaner. That's fouled away. Strike one. Right on the leaner. I'm surprised these dice lean so well in this felt. Try it again. Ten. That's a patient. That's a 60. And that is going to be a fly out to left. One out. Here's Sam Bone. And we got to take a timeout, commercial break. So it's mine. I have no money either. I've been working for four months. Very nice. I understand. I understand what you do. That's understandable. I'm not asking you to do what you feel you what you think you need to do. Okay, I can't help her either. I mean. I can't help her either. So, so unfortunately. Well, let's see what they decide to do, okay? Don't, 
do that. Don't do that. Take, just take a deep breath and understand what you got to do, and we'll go and we'll see what the next step is. Not a problem. So as I said, just do what you got, just do what you just do what you can. I'm not asking you to do anything, and unfortunately I can't. This is a this is a, this is a situation she got this is a situation she got herself into. Don't freak out, but are you, are you, are you, you're, you're not leaving the county yet, are you? Okay, so let's, let's, let's see what they decide to do first before they go in, before you do anything. I will, I would, they might let her out if they do. I mean, well, I don't know how they're going to let her out, but they're going to get bond. I mean, nobody here is got any money for bond. I have no money for bond. I have not been working for four months. I have my unemployment has stopped. So, you know, I have nothing. I got I got my own bills here I'm trying to cover. It's been a rough and she her and what she's been doing was tough. Plus, after taking her to Orlando, I had to get my truck you know, repair work after that trip. They hurt my truck. So um, but um, you know, but look, I know you care look, I know you care about her and I'm happy you know, and I appreciate that you said that. But this is something she's gotten herself into at the moment. But I would stay local just before you find out what uh, what to do. Because if you go up there, and all of a sudden if you don't let her go, you got to come back down with it. I'm not. I can't bring her back up to Orlando. Right. I would stay. I would stay put until you find out exactly what's going to happen. Not a, not a problem. If anything, she if anything she did the right thing. If anything, she did the right thing to show up. Because if she didn't, that would have been that would have been a warrant for her arrest, and she could have been in real trouble after that. But at least she showed up. That's it's a technical violation. Right. And, and because of coronavirus right now, they really don't want people in the jail cells, if possible. So, stay put, find out what's and find out what's going on. Stay put in the area, all right. And when we find something more, let me know. You have her, obviously, obviously, you have her phone because that was the number that came up. What's your, what's your name, by the way, again? Jeff, okay. Not a problem, Mr. Jeff. We can speak to meet you. So. Yeah, let her mom know. Definitely call, uh, call her mom. 
All right? No uh, problem. You don't have to call me sir. My name is Robert. Sir is my dad. So don't worry about that. Robert's fine. All right? You have a good one. Let me know what's going on. Okay. Bye-bye. Later, I'll talk to you. It's all right. Sorry about that, guys. Had a quick, had a quick to take a phone call here. I got to make sure I cut this out of the, when I, when I post this, I got to make sure I cut that out. So let's get back to baseball here. Where are we? We're in the, uh, what are we, bottom of the eighth inning? Uh, yeah, bottom of the eighth inning. And we got one out. Sam Bone here is uh, up there against Pratika. And here's the pitch from Pratika. That is a seven. That's going to be a patient, a 70. And that is going to be a hit by pitch on Sam Bone. Not something you want to do. So he hits Bone on a hit by pitch. That sends him to first. And one out. Bone is not going to steal or anything like that. Although he's got a four plus. When I think on that, something when well, that's on there. I believe that's something special on its plus. After jump rating, increased runners jump rating by one the first time it reaches base with a steal opportunity. He's not running. You're down eight, you're down seven to two. You're not running. So here's Pat Duncan. He will come up to bat. Here's the pitch. And that is a seven. That's a patient. That's a 76. And that one's going to be a fly out to center field. Bone has to hold. And now the batter will be Rube Bresler. Here's the pitch to Bresler. That is a 10. That's a patient. That's a 24. That's a walk. And now runners at first and second with two outs. On a base on balls. Now he is one next... Next base runner does fatigue Pratika, but the bullpen is going. And the batter now is Fonseca with two outs. Runners are first and second. Red's trying to make a push here in the bottom of the eighth. There's the pitch for Pratika. And that's going to be a nine. That's going to be in play, a 26. And that will do it. That's going to be a base hit for Lou Fonseca. Bone will score from second. Bresler has to hold it second. His run rating is a six, so he will hold there, but I, but that means I'll pick a card. And runner on first advances one base, so he still holds. But Bone does come in to score, and it is now seven to three, and that will do it for Pratika. He is now fatigued. But he pitched beautifully, and he is on line to get the win. So we'll see who St. Louis wants to bring in here to try to get out of this little jam. And they're going to bring in Bill Shirtle. Bill Shirtle will come in to pitch. For the Cardinals. Nine wins, eight losses, 3.180 RA. He'll try to get out of this jam. But now 7-3 to three St. Louis, but still two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. The batter is Sam Crane. And here's the pitch from Sherdell. Sherdell. And that is a wheelhouse. That's a 28. And that is going to be a single for Sam Crane against the lefty. That is a base hit. And I have to draw the card here. Line driver to center field. Runner on second advances one base. His rating is a six. I think you have to be a seven or more. I keep on forgetting, unless it is a six, and he does score. No, run rating a six is a higher advance two bases. My bad. So Bresler actually did score the last inning, but that'll be okay. He gets the inning now. So Fonseca goes to third. Crane is on first. It's now seven to four. 
thought it was a six or four, not seven, but it doesn't matter anyway. So now seven to four, runners at first and third. As Bresler does score, Fonseca goes to third. The batter now is Bubbles Hargrave. So now seven to four. Bill Shirtle trying to get out of the jam here in the bottom of the eighth inning. There's the pitch. That's going to be in play, 21, and that's going to be another base hit. This one by Bubbles Hargrave. Fonseca comes in easily. Crane will go to third. Hargrave goes to first. It's now 7-5. to five. Like you said, who needs pitching there, uh, Utah Mike? 7-5 to five now on another base hit. And we'll see a pinch hitter in for Donahue. As Cincinnati thinks they might be able to get back into this game. Coming on to pit to bat will be Heine Grow. Heine Grow bats 330, 321 against lefties. And he will now pinch hit for the Reds, 7-5. to five. Runners at first and third, grow the batter. Here's the pitch. That's a 10. That's a ballpark, 29. That's going to be in play. It's a 30, and that's going to – oh, he just missed it. Oh, a 4-29 to 29 in play, a 30 is picked, and it's going to pop it out to second, and the inning is over. Oh, what a heartbreaker there. Heine Grow just misses it with a 30 on a 29. Or a 29 is what was rolled, but a 30 here. And since the 30 was on, was when the ball was for the in-play check and not the wild pitch, I don't use the wild that, that bypasses the, the only time the wild pitch comes into effect if it's thrown on the dice. But the inning is over as Heine Grove pops it up. Oh, and Cincinnati's big inning really could have gotten tough there. But the Reds pick up three runs. On three hits and a hit by pitch. Eight are in the books. It's Cardinals seven, Reds five. We go to the top of the ninth. The Reds will bring in the new pitcher themselves. And they will bring in Clint. I don't know if that's pronounced Roger or Roger or Ro a Rogue. I don't know, but I'm going to say that's Clint Roger. He will pitch for Cincinnati. One win, two losses, a 4.08 ERA. He will pitch for the Reds here in the top of the ninth. And leading off for St. Louis is Vern Clemens. Top of the ninth inning. Here's the pitch. That's a 10. That's an in play, a 52. And that's a ground out to third, one out. Here's Specs to Porcer. And that is a five. That's a ballpark. 95 is in play, though. It's a 52. And that's a ground ball to third. And the Cardinals are bringing a pinch hitter for Patika as they're going to have to go to their closer for this one to close this game out. Pretty much the first time really the closer has been brought in. Or not Bill Patika, but Shirtle, a pinch hitter for, 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 for Shirtle. My bad. That's left Patika's card uh, still uh, in the thing there. So let's see who we can bring out to bat. He's a righty. 
to be 33. And they're going to bring in Heine Mueller. He will bat for the Cardinals for the pitcher. Two outs. So here's Heine Mueller. He bats 363 against the righties. And that is a seven. That's a tough. It's a 10. And that is a clean strikeout on Heine Mueller. And he is done there. It's a three-up, three-down inning for the Cardinals. And the side is retired. So we're going to go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Cardinals nursing a two-run lead. St. Louis got to go to the bullpen and try to bring out their closer. And of course, they really didn't have many closers back in the day. So in this case, I'm going to bring in the best pitcher. And he does have a save here, which I could use. I'm going to use Bill Doak. I know he's a starter, but he does have a save, and I'm going to use him. Bill Doak will come in to close this game out. 15 wins, 6 losses, 2.59 ERA. He will come in to close here on the bottom of the ninth inning. Cincinnati does have the top of the lineup and Doty Pasker. So here's the pitch. And that is a 7. That's a tough. It's a 20. And that is a strikeout on Pasker. One down. And the batter now is Jake Dalbert. Albert is two for four today, triple and a single. Here's the pitch. It's an eight. That's an in play, an 88, and that is a ground out to second. And the last chance for Cincinnati will be Sam Bone. Bill Dope trying to get the save. Here's the pitch. And that is a nine. That's a tough. It's a 99. That will do it. A fly ball to left field. Settling under it is Rogers Hornsby. He will make the catch. And this ball game is in the books as the Cardinals open up with a four-game winning streak as they beat the Cincinnati Reds here 7-5. to five. So nothing across for the Reds. And I'll give a final line score here in a moment. 2, 3, 4, 8, 11, 13, 14, and 1. Let's see. Five runs. 2, 3, 6, 9, and 2. So the final line score of this game is the Cardinals, 7 runs, 14 hits, and an error. Cincinnati, 5 runs, 9 hits, and 2 errors. Pratika gets the win. Marquard the loss, and Dope gets the save. The Cardinals advance to four wins and no losses, and Cincinnati now drops to three and three. Thank you, Sports Time Machine and Bears Den 007 for joining me. I'll probably have another game here in a little bit as I do a reset, as a reset and get the lineups here. And, of course, tonight we got the Chicago White Sox and the Baltimore Orioles in the 1994 restart. Huge game tonight between those two teams. Uh, it's got wild card implications. It's got division implications as we get later into August and approach the the pennant uh, September pennant race. So thank you very much for joining. For everyone here that uh, leaves out the door, please leave a like. I want to thank you very much for joining me. And uh, we'll get another game here soon here in this 1921 replay with the Cardinals. Final score here, Cardinals 7, Reds 5. See you guys again, see you guys again soon.